All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Mars. Mars conjunct the lunar nodes. The lunar nodes, we call them Rahu and Ketu. Ketu is the south node, Rahu is the north node. That's what they're called in Western astrology. In the Western traditions, they also call them Rahu or the north node as the dragon's head, and then the tail of the dragon is Ketu. That's really kind of neat because they're also seen as Nagas or serpents or dragons in Hindu mythology as well. Um, we're actually in an eclipse period right now, so I thought it might be good to talk about that. And I've also been making videos on all of the planets conjunct the notes. So you can go back and watch some of those other ones if you want. Today we're going to do one on Mars. And uh, let's go right into it. So Mars conjunct K2. Actually, wait. So... I have not done a, a course on just the the nodes in signs. That's actually more important. So there's still a ton of things that you guys aren't going to get in the pieces of your puzzle from just these planets on, or sorry, just these videos on planets conjunct nodes. Because you still got to factor in like the Lord of the Node. You have to factor in the Avastas of that. You have to factor in the sign that this is happening in the house. Um, so just know that the planets conjunct nodes this actually isn't the most important thing but it's just what i felt called to talk about because no one else had talked about this that much on youtube okay so maybe in the future i'll do a you know rahu in the signs video which i would love to do if i get time but uh all right so mars conjunct k2 when mars is with k2 k2 is the past life signifier so it means that you have done mars a lot in past lives if you have Mars conjunct K2 if it's in its own sign like in Scorpio or in uh, Aries or if it's exalted in Capricorn then you've done really well with that Mars and congratulations you deserve that uh, and thank you for your service as we say to people in the military because you probably did something um, pretty admirable <clears throat> in past lives Mars conjunct K2 I actually have a lot of buddies with this placement I have two of my best friends growing up with who were born just like a couple days or like a day after each other. Um, or yeah, like a day, like so literally everything's the same except their rising sign and their moon sign has changed. And so that's kind of fun. And I also have a lot of other, you know, people that I've noticed that have had this. So one of the, one thing you'll actually notice is that because <clears throat> because K2 is an eclipse planet, K2 hides things. Um, <clears throat> and remember K2 is, is really, it's just, it's only satisfied with absolutes because it was so, we had that so much in the past life that in this life, we just feel like we can never have enough of that. And so because it hides things, um, they can, these people can actually have a lot of Mars things come out in their dreams. They can have very violent dreams and same with Mars Rahu too. They could have very violent dreams or like aggression or just <clears throat> really surprising uh, confrontational violent fighting type things going on in their dreams a lot because of having to suppress this Mars energy or having to hide it throughout the day. Um, and another, another thing about that is that, yeah, these people are really... <clears throat> They're actually just really strong people and they're really great at solving problems and, you know, just like tackling, uh, tackling an obstacle or a situation because that's what you do. You break out your Mars when the house is burning down or when there's a war, or when there's something really gnarly going on. You're about to be hurt. You have to hurt something or else even more. So these people are able to do that. They have a great uh, survival instinct um, along with being able to solve problems, but they... Um, they also, because of this past life experience with Mars, depending on other parts of the chart, you can see that they might have, um, you can see a skittishness in them, a hesitancy, a, uh, <clears throat> it's like a PTSD. It's like they have a, a stress and a trauma from using their Mars, or they know the limits of that, and they know that it could fail them at any moment, and so they're more uptight about failure, too. Um, these people hate to fail at anything. Um, and so sometimes these people can get a little bit anxiety ridden and hesitate and um, not trust their instincts. Um, but they're actually quite good with their instincts overall. 
Um, their instincts are very well developed, you could say, their survival instincts. Um, and yeah, these people, because they're such soldiers and warriors, they get really worked up about like losing battles, anything they lose. I mean, one of my buddies who has this, he's an, like, a, like a legendary skateboarder in the, my area of uh, southeastern United States, Charleston, South Carolina mainly. And he's just like, he's so famous and well known, but he only just thinks of like the things he wasn't able to do skating or the tricks he wasn't able to land or whatever. Um, you know, Brad Pitt has this, you know, he's a really kind of uptight guy. Matt Damon, Rob Lowe, um, Tesla. These are all guys that are like really, really capable and yet really, really uptight still. So basically, yeah, this is a placement of getting you really uptight, really, or you have to basically do stuff to let off some steam because you have unconsciously, you're using your Mars a lot more than you think you need, than you need to, and you don't maybe realize it. Um, so these people get overly worked up about losing battles and are like really uptight about if they're or about losing them or whatever, what they could have done better. Um, and they don't see how their efforts and will like was useful and did a pretty good job. Even if the overall like war was lost, they still, you know, they, they worked hard and they did well. But overall, this is a better placement kind of than Mars Rahu, which I'm going to get to next. <clears throat> K2 Mars, he's like an overly uptight soldier, an overly disciplined soldier, like Rob Lowe. If you've ever watched the show Parks and Rec, Rob Lowe plays this character, Chris Traeger, who's like an obsessed health nut, you know, who like can't relax in any way. Again, Mars K2. He has his Mars shame too, so it's even more noticeable there, the negative side. But you know, he's like a perfect specimen, you know? Um, so he's like super uptight. These guys, you tell them to do 20 push-ups, they'll do them. They'll say, was that enough? Should I do more? I think I need to do more. They'll do 40, you know? <laughs> it's just, these people kind of have that. Unless Mars is very afflicted, of course, but um, overly disciplined soldier. When we get to Mars Rahu, that's like a more kind of like less disciplined soldier, you know what I mean? Or even a drunk or intoxicated soldier because Rahu can have to do with that. Um, yeah, so there actually can be a lot of like humility holding the Mars back a bit with displacement. Um, and so these people are usually very good warrior souls and are not too like braggadocious about it. You know, um, like Matt Damon um, and Brad Pitt. Um, you know, Tesla was very, very competent, but, you know, he, he didn't uh, he didn't really get his due and he wasn't a super you know, egotistical person about it. George R. R. Martin has this as well. You can see how he's kind of skewed all of his Game of Thrones. It's the nodes always color something, you know, they always put a filter on things. So if you have the filter of Mars on your K2, especially if it's in the Scorpio, like George R. R. Martin has, everything has this Scorpio, at, you know, all of history was just evil and death and killing and raping. Actually, no, you know what I mean? Maybe read some Indian history, you know, maybe read the Piranhas, you know, but, you know, these people, they won't be intrigued by that. You get a Venus K2 person, they're going to love to read the Piranhas. You see what I'm saying? Um, okay, so Mars conjunct Rahu. Mars conjunct Rahu. Now, this is a different, interesting thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me back up. I got to back up. Uh, Mars conjunct K2, something very funny. I noticed this when I was watching um, a TV show um, with uh, the character, with an actor in it, a comedian named Tracy Morgan. And he's in the show, uh, he's being told, don't do this, don't do that. He's like, well, I got to do it now. And I kept thinking, I was like, huh, that seems like something he really has innately in his personality. And, and I was like, that really reminds me of a friend of mine who has... Mars K2, my friend, and who is a, my skater friend that I was mentioning, and this guy, like, no matter what, if I ever told him he couldn't do a trick, he would, no matter what, do it. He would kill himself to do that trick if I told him he couldn't do it. And uh, that, I realized, I had this kind of realization. I looked up Tracy Morgan's chart. I was like, wow, he has Mars conjunct K2 as well. So Mars conjunct K2, I found this with a few other people, these are people that if you tell them, they, basically reverse psychology can work really well on these people. Because if you tell them there's no way you can do that, or like you're not allowed to do it, just don't do that, they'll be like, 
if you get them in the right mood, they'll be like, I have to do that. Because they're just so rebellious with their willpower. There's like, there's no way you can define what my willpower can or cannot do. And so they get real worked up about willpower stuff. Um, yeah, so it's very funny. Um, very attached to their willpower. You see, K2 is what we're really attached to and we're never fully satisfied with it. So you can just play willpower games with these people. Not like you should manipulate anyone who uses astrology for that, but I'm just saying like, you have to know that this is something that these people value a lot. And uh, yeah, if if I wanted my buddy Morgan to get to go and do a gnarly trick, I wouldn't say you got that, you should do it. I would say you can't do it. There's no way you can do that. And then he would make sure he would kill himself until he did it. It's kind of funny. <sighs> okay, now on to Mars conjunct Rahu. These are people who don't know how to solve problems, basically. Mars conjunct K2 is someone who really knows how to solve problems and really knows how to put their will and their effort into things. Mars conjunct Rahu, opposite. Clueless there. <sighs> Obstacles and problems feel a lot bigger than they really are for Mars Rahu person. I should know. I have Mars and Rahu conjunct. It, my Mars is in its own sign, and so I have been working on this for more than one life. So you won't see as many of the major hang-ups with me, but still, I definitely have a lot of this. I mean, I am not a handyman. I don't know how to... F I, it's taken me so long to learn how to just fix things around my house. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's that sort of thing with Mars Rahu, like a, a strong Mars person or a Mars K2 person, they're like constantly fixing up their house for fun. In fact, the other guy, not the skater guy, but the other guy born within a day of him, all he does is fix up his girlfriend's house. She owns a house and he fixes that up as like a way that like pays for his rent and everything. So, um, and it's funny because I can't seem to get him to help me with this because the gods want me to fix my house on my own because of my Mars Rahu. And yet I want to like find ways around that, you see? Because um, I'm a, you know, I have a K2 in Libra. I'm a Venusian person for past lives. I prefer to just study and learn and be surrounded by a library and pursue Brahminical pursuits. But um, no, in this life I've had to learn to embrace my Mars a lot more and to have more courage. You can kind of get disappointed in these people's lack of courage a lot of times. And uh, yeah, they can really kind of let you down in their lack of assertiveness or they just don't want to go for things enough. And I'm definitely, I've been guilty of that at times in life. Um, <clears throat> these people really need to learn to cook because Mars is cooking and fire but also, especially if they're male, because Mars is a brahmachari planet. He's the brahmachari. He makes his own meals, does everything himself, lives by himself, to just to pursue those goals. A brahmachari, you'll hear this associated with being celibate if you're not too deep in the yoga world, but it really means brahma, god, chari, chara, going. Chara means going or moving. You like how the chara rashis are the moving, changing, active signs where the seasons change. So. Brahmachara, brahmacharya means someone going, moving towards Brahma, God, which means someone totally focused on what they're doing. So it really doesn't even mean you can't have sex, but if it's like, okay, I'm going to have sex, have that, and then they're not going to think about sex again, go back to what I'm totally focused on. And you basically, it means you're going to live like Brahma. You're going to live like, the, you're going to live a disciplined, conscious life. And you don't have to be brahmachari to just to pursue your spiritual life. Like a great athlete would be a brahmachari. You know, an astrologer who's just hardcore devoted to their learning of astrology is a brahmachari. It's not something that is exclusively meant for <clears throat> spiritual context, just so you guys know. So Mars is that, the person who's just, I wanna be the best basketball player I can be, and they're just so focused, they won't go out partying, they won't go meet girls, they won't do all this, they're just like, this is who I am and I'm doing this. When this is done, yeah, maybe I'll get married or something. But, you know, there's just this incredible fire and focus. So, you notice those other guys I mentioned with Mars Ketu had all those qualities, like Tesla, I believe Tesla was actually a lifelong virgin. Tesla, um, was just one of those guys who was celibate and channeled all his, all his chi up into his mind to invent and to make the world better. Um, you know, Brad Pitt is someone who 
seems like he has a lot of control over his sexual energy or he wouldn't be so successful with all the temptations he's probably had. Matt Damon is someone who's very, you know, kind of well known for that sort of discipline and ethics. So anyways, yeah, the uh, the brahmachari quality, real big in Matt Damon, I feel like. You know, go watch Goodwill Hunting. That was basically something he wrote that movie himself. Um, you just couldn't do that if you didn't have a strong Mars. Make a movie go from nothing to Goodwill Hunting. You know what I mean? Um, so anyways, back to Mars Rahu. Mars Rahu is the opposite, though. It doesn't have this training and this soldier-like quality from past lives, so they respond haphazardly. They can respond really poorly, um, not not with good instincts or with the untrained instinct, you could say. So they really have to embrace training, training themselves. You have to practice to be better. Practice makes perfect. These people need to be told that over and over. Um, the instinctive response doesn't always work well enough, and we have to adapt. Um, you know, you can watch one of my videos from a year ago in 2020 where I was like, the raccoon stole all my precious peaches, and I was like broken from it. You know what I mean? I was like, so, I was just like broken for a day, like crying over that. You know, uh, maybe a really strong Mars person would have just planted another fruit tree or something, or you know, moved on or not taken it that hard. Um, yeah, so sometimes with Mars, it's logic. So wherever Mars Ra who's at, is at in the chart, they may not logically understand that thing or that area of life. And you have to coach them, look, dude, you're just approaching this like a, in a fantasy world and you don't really know how this really works. So Mars Rahu in the ninth, one doesn't know how religion and Dharma and, and, and morals and ethics really work probably and needs to like get more and more second opinions or they're going to just attract a toxic guru or leader to um, symbolize how they're not paying, how they're not really addressing that. Mars Rahu in the seventh would be, okay, you maybe don't know how relationships really work logically. Um, Mars Rahu in the second, I have that, and I didn't know how finances worked. So hence why I had to go get into financial astrology and why it's been so good for me to do that, even though I really don't care about money at all still. But you have to put work into where your Rahu's at to make your life better and to balance out your past karma. And so learning the mechanics of investing in finances and things like that was really helpful for me. Mars Rahu in the first, you might need to work out, build up your body, you know, go to a gym, take yoga classes, like learn how the body works, study anatomy and physiology, you know. Mars Rahu in the sixth, learn about your health, you know, on and on and on, you see. Um, these people, if they're not if they're not consciously addressing their Mars, they can attract very violent situations in life. They can attract violent people in life. You can look it up, but I was pushed over the I was pushed over a bush by a police officer, a cop. She walked up and pushed me over a bush from behind while I was skateboarding downtown when I was young, and this became a big thing. And I was even on Good Morning America and was interviewed by 11 million households. Diane Sawyer interviewed me and. Boy, was that a Mars Rahu in your second house of speech, having to speak up and assert yourself. And uh, again, though, it was just a total surprise, though. That's what will happen if one is not focusing on Mars. It will unconsciously smack them, you know. And being a skateboarder, I obviously had a lot of opportunities for that, <laughs> as you could imagine. And, um, you know, as a skater, I had to learn to embrace training. Like, I was the only skater I knew that stretched and did yoga before skating, even at 18, you know, back in 2004 when you would get made fun of relentlessly for doing yoga in America um, and be just hardcore shamed over those things. Um, you know, so you can, so you can, like, attract a lot of violent situations in life or violent people, um, and then these people can sometimes keep you from acting or expressing in, or in, instinctively or keep you from feeling like you can assert yourself. Um, there's a lot of battles with just asserting yourself that will go on. Um, people will, t uh, if you have Mars Rahu, it's like just, just running my business. Like, okay, this is my protocol. If you go on my site, you'll see I'm very standoffish, very, this is how it has to be. I'm booked up six months out. If you don't come to this, I'm not going to talk to you. And yet, when they do, they just want to demand all these other things or control the, the, the dialogue if they have a strong Mars. And I'm like, nope, sorry, I'm controlling this. I'm the astrologer. You can either, you know, accept that and work with me patiently like you would work with a doctor or dentist or you can move on, you know. 
But that was always really stressful for me for a long time. It's taken a long time for me to be able to just be like, okay, no, no, yes, this person is a, the right person to work with. Um, <clears throat> we have to assert ourselves more. We have to not be afraid of confrontation. Um, anytime I've tried to avoid confrontation in life, it's just gotten worse. So I've learned to <laughs> just deal with it. And so, yeah, um, some of you guys might even notice that from my tone or from how I react to comments or things. And even a lot of my teachers have been very Mars-like teachers because, again, I've had to learn how to do this. And at first, I, like, see, my brother was a, was a rather toxic Mars person. And so I had to learn to, like, unlearn his habits that I kind of learned just growing up around him and other toxic Mars people. And then I had to learn healthier Mars habits. And this is what led me to Kriya Yoga in many ways was Kriya Yoga. Um, I learned from Roy Eugene Davis, who has a Mars delighted by an exalted Jupiter. And his teacher, Yoga Nandu, had a very strong Mars. Man, Kriya Yoga like saved my life in a lot of ways for just giving me a second opinion on ethics and what to do and all this stuff. And I remember I just always had such more of a like, oh, I got to teach them a lesson sort of quality before Roy Eugene Davis and his grace and Kriya Yoga. And he just started, you know, he just, I remember him explaining it at workshops when I went to his retreats. He was like, you don't need to teach anyone lessons. Like he was like, God, let God do that. You know, you just focus on you. You just keep following the concept or, you know, keep doing your Dharma, being a soldier essentially. So yeah if mars is strong you won't you you can resist this violence and learn to train and cultivate it but if it's mars is very starved and afflicted or shamed you can almost guarantee a lot of violence in this person's life it might be from them not being able to control their mars you know so it can be ca them causing it or it can be other people in their life that they attract as a result and uh and they won't always go to the astrologer or anyone either because they don't know how to logically fix things. They don't really get that. Um, they just kind of want to run from it. And, and then when it comes up, they just don't know what to do. And then they just hope that it goes away. And then when it goes away, they just don't ever try to address it again. Um, so this also leads me to the important thing is you want a really good Jupiter delighting, aspecting, or just a good Jupiter in your chart overall because that really helps Mars out because Jupiter is the guidance of Mars's fire. You know, and they're just... They work so well together. So a good Jupiter is very critical to help this placement out. And it gives you a little more luck with your Mars. Um, and yeah, this this placement, like I was mentioning with my, with my brother, it can make a lot of stress and wounds around siblings. Your brothers or sisters or how you like assert yourself with them. And then as you get older, how you work with teammates, neighbors, students, all these things. And you'll have to work a lot on, or if you're like me, you had to work a lot on how to make those things just work right and not have people just being dicks to you all the time or, or not feeling like you're not feeling bitter and taken advantage of constantly. Um, and yeah, the thing is, is that with these pl this placement, it kind of shows that one often didn't feel very prepared for the problems at hand growing up. And so they didn't maybe see a lot of emphasis, a point of training, you know, I mean, maybe not, but it, it just depends, but they have to learn to embrace training one way or another eventually. But yeah, you got to avoid when shit hits the fan, just freaking out or whatever you want to, you want to be calm and collected and okay, what do we do here? That's Mars. So that's why training, training is so important for these people. Um, you guys have noticed this about me. I've mentioned how, you know, like in Kriya Yoga, you, you don't just meditate when you want, do it. No, you learn a set of specific practices. You repeat them every day at the same time of day, ideally, you know, over and over for six months before you even expect a result. You know, that's training. That's uh, this whole new age world of it's spirituality. It's, oh, you just do what you want. Oh, take some mushrooms and just go and channel some angel or something. I'm sorry, but that's not real spirituality. That's just ego, fantasy, imagination stuff. You know, um, it takes a strong Mars to embrace the real spiritual path. That's why there's not many people on it. Um, you know, so yeah. And again, this is why I embrace like, okay, like I had to learn Aikido. I had to learn martial arts. Um, wow, I'm just having a memory. In my dream last night, I had a friend from high school 
uh, attacking me like fun wrestling and and he could normally beat me up but I did this Kodagaishi thing and just 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 put him down and was like ah okay that's funny and I you know healed from that because when I was younger my my peers would feel like they were just taking over me you know like taking over my opinion and my will and and I ended up doing things I wasn't not like horrible things but I just like just stuff I wasn't really obviously into you know like or just partying or doing stuff that I didn't need to do because I was just kind of going with peer pressure or going with the flow um there's times to do that and then there's times to use your mars and be like wait actually this is not what i'm about or this is not what's right or you know what i mean and i've boy has that been a theme in my life um but yeah these people also another interesting theme is that they these people can um have mars is energy so with Rahu there, it's like they don't know how to direct their energy. Like I can definitely experience that a lot with my energy levels going up and down a lot and not um, like meditation again, pranayama, just really helping to insulate and regulate all of that. But these people can be super active, super restless. Um, if they don't have the Jupiter or good Raja Yogas, it's not that focused, you know. But either way, if it's focused or not, they have to push that somewhere, you know. And they need something productive to do like that. Again, like to be training or whatever. Um, and then it can work out really well. And that's the thing is like some of the best inventors have this placement. Um, or just some really, you know, innovative people with really brilliant minds who can do new original things have this placement. Uh, but then there's also some ones who have some really nasty like violence and things that you know they um jack nicholson has mars rahu wow what a what a creepy figure um that dude had a tunnel from the playboy mansion to his house he had an underground tunnel along with a number of other famous celebrities you can read articles about this that go back to like 2014 or something i mean what were you doing i mean the playboy mansion was already a pretty a place where anything goes you think so what was Jack Nicholson needing to do to have an underground tunnel that would go from there back to his house? I don't want to know. But that's Mars Rahu in unrestrained fashion. The Shining, like all his roles. You can't play those roles if you don't have some of that in you. Um, you know, John Lennon. You know, he's kind of, he was kind of a lot crazier than people thought. Than people want to think, actually, if you go into it. Um, uh, Edward Snowden. You know, he had a lot of interesting military karma and stuff um larry david larry david's someone who doesn't react <laughs> you know react like i said not reacting appropriately um jerry seinfeld also has that that's kind of interesting um john stewart mark Wahlberg, elon musk um bill maher lance armstrong yeah some others so yeah i hope that that uh helps you guys get an appreciation on Mars Rahu or K2. All right, thanks, y'all. Please like, subscribe, whatever. Follow me, blah, 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 all that stuff. Okay, bye.